Perhaps you've seen this article, perhaps you have not. I'd like to speak about Mr. Hawking. Mr. Hawking quite disappoints me for someone who is supposed to be at the top of his field and with such a big brain with all the answers, or most of the answers he thinks, or searching for answers. All stuck in his chair, shriveled up, can't do anything. The man has no faith. The man offers scientific answers for this and that, but he cannot bring himself to do such a simple thing like have faith. So, he says flat out he does not believe in God, but he believes that space travel offers the best hope for our species' immortality. Can you believe someone who claims to be so smart would make such an ignorant statement like that. And um, they're going to have a Star Must Festival in the Canary Islands. Um, <clears throat> they had an interview with him. Click this video. And this is uh, searchable on Google. It's under NBC News. And... Uh, He's, in his brief history of time, he's talking about principles and theories that would enable scientists to know the mind of God. And he says in the grand design, the mechanism behind the origin of the universe was becoming so well known that God was no longer necessary. Can you believe this man? Before we understand science, it is natural to believe that God created the universe, but now science offers a more convincing explanation. What I meant by we would know the mind of God is we would know everything that God would know. If there were a God, which there isn't, I'm an atheist. It is just astounding To know the mind of God, we would know everything that God would know. And science offers a more convincing explanation. So to them, science is their God, is what it sounds like to me. He said years ago he was not religious. God does not intervene to break the laws that he decreed. Since then, there's been a lot more theorizing devoted to the origin of the universe, and now he believes that an approach known as the M-theory will eventually reveal the grand design of the cosmos. And uh, he is... 72 years old now, and he still has no faith in 72 years. And he is not allowed to fly. So how he will get to attend this uh, conference, well, he'll have to take a boat, apparently. And then, of course, we know what he said about the aliens. Don't try to make contact with them. If didn't work out well when we contacted the Indians. Well, people like Mr. Hawking have a large influence because they're, they're looked to as being smart, you know, like an Albert Einstein being smart and in his field cosmos and such. There's much faith placed in things that he finds and writes and, and gives his ideas on and theories and whatnot. So it is disturbing to me and I actually feel sorry for this guy, really. It is disturbing to me that he, he would make statements like what we just looked at 
because all his life, most of all his life, he's been confined to this, this chair. And you would think that he would have had a lot of time to think about things, and he has. But he's not been able to wrap his mind around the fact that the mind of God will never be measured nor understood. We are just, we have the minds of an ant compared to the mind of the Lord. So it, it makes no rational sense to think that we could actually understand everything, you know, how exactly speaking something into existence could actually be. We can't create anything from nothing. We can make things and call them our creations, but we have to have existing substances to make things out of. We can't just make a house or a car or a shirt or a pair of pants or anything like that out of nothing just by uttering the word car or pants or shirt or house. And then there it is. We can't do that. We have to make and combine things together. If Mr. Hawking thinks for some reason that when he dies, he will, his atoms, his essence, will go into the cosmos and nothing will be lost, no energy will be lost, and he'll just join in with the rest of the cosmic energy and, and continue and well, this man who I speak of, and that would go for every denier and non-believer, they all need our prayers. They all need them. Because they're lost. They are lost sheep. The shepherd, Jesus is looking for them. But they keep running away. They keep not hearing his voice. They keep not turning back. And it is their choice. It is their free will. It is their denial. And they're going to lose so much. You know, he talks about immortality and that space travel offers the best hope for our species' immortality. Space travel. We will all enter into a different dimension when we leave this shell that we call a body. You can't get to the other dimension unless your soul separates from this body. And so that will be your form of space travel. You will enter the other dimension and each man according to the word that's been given to us, each person will receive a judgment. Each person is going to go one place or the other place. The good place, the bad place. Heaven or hell. It's just the way it is. You can deny it all you want. But when it happens, and your time comes to be judged, when you separate from your body, that's not the time to learn that what you denied 
is in fact true. You have the opportunity now. So why not take it? A little different of an issue. I would like to show and I'm having a little bit of a problem with sending things to people. Now I'll just give a little example. Now for some reason since I connected to Google Plus, which I had to do that because they were not letting me reply to comments, nor were they letting me uh, send private messages or anything. So let's pretend I'm going to email someone of whom I know for a fact has a valid address. And it was letting me do this prior to my connection to, to a degree and then it stopped it from that so I know this is valid because I can send a private a private message and I can uh, reply to a comment so I am wanting to share this video as an example with this person and I'm getting this and I've already clicked that and I've already downloaded uh, in the file all my old messages and my contact list and all that stuff. And I'm a little stumped as to what more I can do. I've been over and over and over uh, trying to figure out whatever it is I don't know and whatever it is I'm doing wrong. It's that's not allowing me to do certain things. So it, if I get a private message, apparently I can send back a reply. If you leave a comment on my video, apparently I can reply. I have no way to know whether you're getting it or not. I can tell whether you're connected to Google or not, but I don't know for sure whether you're actually receiving it. But as far as sending uh, you know, videos that I think you might like or, or have some good information in them, well, I haven't quite figured that out and what more to do. If anybody's got an idea of what, what I need to do, uh, which I've already written Google today, then please let me know what I need to do to fix this, to be able to send again. As you see, God is wanting these people, but they won't come around. They haven't, but they have the chance. So when you're saying your prayers, pray for everybody in the whole world. One of, the, one of the nastiest, devious things that Satan ever did was making all these different kinds of uh, denominations and religions and stuff, and it separates people from the one true. It's part of his plan. I don't know how to, how to make it any more plain and clear. And what you got, what I've said before over in Syria now is um, the same plan that they had months and months and months ago. You need to keep your eye on that. And remember Aaron Russo made a video long ago talking about Rockefeller and their plan to have an event. Through the event, they would have an invisible enemy called terrorism. The event was 9-11. This was told to him uh, you know, a few years before 9-11. So your terrorism is an invisible enemy that can be perpetuated and fought infinitely.